you know, she still has a tape recorder under her notebook. Mm -hmm. She was making a nervous, and I didn't want her to take it secretly, so... Now, Monica, you've always known this book was going to come out. It mm -hmm. was always going to be written at some stage, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Has it been weighing on your mind? Have you been dreading it? I think this past year, uh, since Mrs. Clinton's book actually came out last year, it has been. Um, that was a bit... It was a bit more unsettling for me um, in terms of how um, how much it brought back memories um, from '98 and uh, how much the press uh, I think got into a frenzy. So I've really been thinking about okay, got one more coming, um, and it's made me anxious. Was there ever a thought in your head that you wouldn't read it? That you would just pretend it wasn't there? I don't know about not read it. I think that I've certainly, um, as I had done last year, I certainly have taken proactive steps to make it a, um, a different experience for me and something that whenever you experience a trauma, I have learned and worked on in therapy to try that the that the best thing to do when something comes up and it reminds you of that trauma is to try and remind yourself and figure out all of the things that are different now than how things were back then. And um, sometimes that's really hard, <laughs> but that's, that's what I try to do. We've all seen the queues around the blocks that people waiting to buy the books, a million dollars in advance orders and so on. Mm -hmm. And you know, and everyone knows that the first thing we all do when we open that book is we turn straight to the index and we look under L and we look for Lewinsky. Mm -hmm. Did you do that? Well, I actually, sort of, but I had remarked to the person that I was with that I thought, oh, watch, I bet, you know, he didn't put my name in the index just to sort of spite everybody. Um, and so I thought for a second that maybe it, it wouldn't be there. But, um, but you turned to the index, right? You turned to the index, just like we all did. Yes, I did. And, and you saw your name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what happens then? Your heart sinks or you, get, you, you sweat? Or, I mean, what happens when you see your name like that? Um, I think I was, well, having already seen the Dan Rather interview that he did um, and having read some accounts of what was in this book. Um, I was already disappointed, um, but curious, uh, probably still a bit naive, thinking, well, maybe there's a surprise. Maybe he'll be a different, more mature person than um, what we've seen in the past few days. But I was wrong. Yeah. So what do you think of the book? Is it honest? Well, I think what's important to know is that I, I, I really wish that I, I didn't have to comment on this book, just as I didn't comment on Mrs. Clinton's book. And um, that I, I think that there, there are really two parts, in a way, that I feel I need to address. And um, I, I didn't really expect him to talk in detail about the relationship because he's a married man and uh, he's worked hard to stay married um, and I, I it would be inappropriate I think to have to discuss the details but what I I was hoping and I did expect was for him to acknowledge and correct the the inaccurate and false statements that he his staff and the DNC made about me when they were trying to protect the presidency. His strategy and um, to, I think, to defeat, to try and defeat Ken Starr was to debase my character. He had, you know, the, he had the media and the power, the money and the private investigators and he used them to, 
to come after me and to, to earn his badge of honor. And um, in the process, he destroyed me. And that was the way he was going to have to do that, to get through impeachment. And I don't know if he ever thought about the fact that, that, I, that I refused to wear a wire in the face of 27 years, you know, being threatened with 27 years in jail, being threatened with the prosecution of my mother. Um, and I was only 24 years old. I was, I was a young girl. And um, I don't know, to sort of hear him say some of the things he's saying today. It's, it's a shame. But on the other part, on the other half, unfortunately, he did sort of address some aspect or outline some part of this relationship. And um, he never calls it a relationship. I guess. No. Should we no. have a look at some and it was things? a mutual relationship. I mean, I'm, I really wish I did not have to go here because this is something that I never wanted to talk about publicly. And I know he wish had never become public. Um, but this was a mutual relationship from the way it started all the way through. And um, I don't know if he was trying to refer to Kohlberg's moral stages of development with his statement of, because I could. But from when it started, it was because he wanted to. So. He, in the book, is very damning of what happened. Mm -hmm. He's very cold about it. He paints a very different picture to the picture you paint. He never talks about a relationship. Mm -hmm. It is painted in, in quite sordid terms. I'm, I mean, I'm looking at some of the adjectives he says. Wrong, stupid, humiliate, disgust, self-destructive. He said he'd failed, he was appalled, he'd sinned, moral lapse. These are quite um, very negative terms. Mm -hmm. Was it like that? He says it was like that, but you don't say it was like that. No, I, I of course for me it was going to be very different because I also wasn't the person who was married. Um, and I, I, I think I take issue certainly with a lot of those terms. Um, what adjectives would you use to describe the way it was, the way you remember it? I mean, my memories of it were, were much more positive. Um, and uh, I think that I had enjoyed having someone uh, being so happy to see me and um, certainly the gifts that were exchanged were touching and I, it it's hard because I I too don't want to go into so much detail again I mean it's it's all there and um, why don't you want to go into detail are you defending him or are you defending it's, yourself it's or? not it's not a matter of defending him or defending myself I think it's that it feels uncomfortable I guess the truth is is that it feels uncomfortable I'm tired of having to defend myself in something that was mutual and it's hurtful um, it is it, it's a blight to all women to have had a man to have had him say because I could and to have someone while he, I think, said in his British interview that the account that is out there about this relationship is not accurate and that he's never testified or never said what this relationship was. He has said what it was not, and what he has said what it was not is not true. And I am not, I'm not going to illuminate once again what this was. And let me be clear that the reason I did initially and publicly was because I was under oath and I was forced to testify about those things in part because he didn't choose to be, come forward in the beginning now 
in all honesty, I understand, I can understand that. I can understand someone wanting to save his presidency as an American. That's what most Americans wanted. I don't accept that he had to, that he had to completely desecrate my character, which not only affected me, but my family, my friends, and my future. Do you feel he betrayed you in a way? Because you, yes, you defended him. You refused to wear the wire. You withstood a lot of interrogation, and you refused to say he'd asked you to lie because that is right. what you say was the case. And but I, you could so have said a lot more, and you didn't. And do you feel that he should therefore have reciprocated? Well, I, I think to to be legally accurate, it's not that I could have necessarily said a lot more because I was completely truthful, but. I held out in taking immunity and accepting immunity until the independent counsel's office was ready to accept the truth that I had to, to give them, which included, as he points out in his book numerous times, that nobody asked me to lie. And I, I, I think that, that he has you know, made, made a point oftentimes, which is accurate, that the press has not wanted to necessarily focus on some of the other people who have gone through tragedies and traumas, just like he has and I have through what through Ken Starr's investigation. But that doesn't mean that anybody's experiences are any less. What happened was something that should have been a private mistake, a private mistake that a president could make, that an, an employee could make, that anybody could make, and that a lot of private citizens do make. And it, in, in all honesty, I probably, I'm not sure if I have apologized to him that I had disclosed the facts of the affair to my friends. I owe him an apology for that because that was one step that led to this process. But the fact that it became a legal situation was ridiculous. It really was. When It was unbelievable and it shouldn't have been. And so I completely agree with how zealously you know, Ken Starr was going after people and um, I, I just... It, and I also, I applaud him, I do, really, for the work that he has done in looking at why he might have done something like this in sharing with people about his exploration into his childhood and, I think, facing his demons, looking at his parallel lives. I just think it stops there. And for whatever reason, he seems unable to have his actions follow his words. It's what he doesn't say as much as what he does say. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It would seem to me. Exactly. But, you know, the account that he gives is so different from the account that you give. Is there ever a part of you that thinks, have I gone mad? Was it really like this? Am I recalling this completely wrongly? Am I a fantasist? I mean, I'm not suggesting not you are, but, but uh, was there ever a time that he made you question your, your almost your sanity on, on, on the whole affair? I, no, I mean, I, I maybe for three seconds um, in 1998, you know, three seconds. Um, but I think under the circumstances, that was probably as a result of, uh, you know, investigators digging up dirt on me that was then being disseminated throughout the media. Him telling Sidney Blumenthal ridiculous stories and Sidney Blumenthal disseminating that through the media. Um, you know, White House staffers and DNC people having talking points to disseminate through the media. Um, gee, I don't know. <laughs> that that can't affect you when you're not a politician already having thick skin. So, But your problem is mm -hmm. that you're the only one, apart from him, mm -hmm. that knows the way it was. That's right. And, you know, he was the president and he had the power and he had all of that. He still right. does. Mm -hmm. He's still got the advantage. Mm -hmm. Hasn't he? No, I have the advantage of the truth. But only you know that. You know what? I know that, and 
I think time after time he's been unable to sort of, um, I guess, just tell the truth. Just tell the truth that uh, that I think people really probably have a hard time always believing him. And honestly, if I was going to make up that I was having a relationship with him, I have a much better imagination than, <laughs> than what I have said. I think I would have done a much better job. I, I guarantee you that. <laughs> Let's go back to this phrase, he did it because he could. Mm -hmm. When we heard that phrase in the office mm -hmm. at work, all the women said, that is the worst thing a man could say mm -hmm. about a woman. Even the men were saying, that's the worst thing a man could say about a woman. Mm -hmm. How does it make you feel about yourself? I was really upset when I first heard it. Um, I, I think mainly because I... I have spent the past several years working so hard to try and move on and to try and build a life for myself. And it has been so difficult because of so many of the lies that he has told um, that about me and about what happened that to me it just confirmed everything he had said and made it worse. Can you remember what you hoped for out of the relationship? What did you expect? At first, nothing. At first, it was, it, it was, it was just in the moment. You, you don't, it's like, it was like with anything. I mean, it was, you have to remember, and I think people have to remember this when they judge him or me, only two people, just regular people, no matter what your title is, no matter your age. Do you think you were naive? Were of you exploited? Course. You were very young? Did he take advantage of you? It's hard to not think that when you hear someone say, because I could. Um, it's hard to not think that. I, 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 I think some of the things that make me so angry or when I think about how adamant I was early on in the investigation when, you know, my lawyer wanted to um, go out and, and accuse him of certain things because of his, the age differences or when people would make remarks when... You know, and I've come to see some things differently, but would, you know, would make remarks about the age differences, and I was just so adamant that no, the responsibility was equal, and it was two people, and do do do, and I just think, gosh, if if I could take responsibility, and I was always so insistent on doing these things, can't you just step up to the plate, and? correct the things that you did that were wrong? I mean, how horrible... I, I, he has a daughter that is only six years younger than me. She is now the age that I was when this investigation started. How would he feel if this happened to her? What would he want for her? What would he expect of the person who was in his position to act then, to act now? I mean... You were 21. I was 22. 22. Right. Okay, you were 22. You were having an affair with the most powerful man in the world. It clearly meant a great deal to you. Mm. Maybe it still does. To him, from this book, mm -hmm. it meant nothing, according to this book. How does that make you feel now? Does it make you feel mad? Does it make you feel... Um, that you want to get revenge on him? Is it, is no. it woman scorned? No, no. It's, it's not about revenge. M me talking to you is not at all about revenge. I think if I... There are plenty of things that I could do if I wanted to get revenge. Um, it's, it's about that... This has been obviously 
life-changing. And he is not completely responsible for this. I mean, obviously, I have my part. But the, the truth is, is that had Linda Tripp not decided to go to tape record conversations and take it to Ken Starr, and Ken Starr had not decided to make this public and turn this into a legal nightmare, this would not be known by everybody. I never would have made this public. So we would not be here. But a big, big, big part of what has made my moving on so difficult has been the, the way I was characterized and the stories that were out there until I testified and the jokes and all sorts of things that all have come out of what? The stories from the White House that were, that was under his direction, the DNC under his direction. And that was all what he says for his badge of honor. All for his badge of honor. He says he, he was proud of the way that he defended the presidency at my expense. He leaves that part out. Tell me, when you look at um, all these pictures that have been trawled up again, all the mm -hmm. pictures of you and him, and there's, there's, there's video footage, moving stuff of you and the president embracing, he's kissing you, and there are some great photographs where you look so happy. You are just beaming. When you look at those photos mm -hmm. now, who is that girl to you? How does it make you feel? Very young. I, I think um, maybe in part because I had my 30th birthday last year, but um, I think I just, I see someone so young and it makes me sad because I, I feel like um, I've lost a lot of, lost a lot of time. Just a lot of time. Does it bring back fond memories? when you see those at all? Um, it, I think it at once brings back a fond memory and yet it's tinged with bittersweet moments, you know, or, or everything that's happened makes it a bittersweet present moment. It's, um, So who's that girl now? Oh. Well, she's definitely matured, definitely has a new perspective on what's happened on life. Trying to I've been trying to forge ahead and um with the support of my family and my friends, and it's been very hard. He's made and continues to make a lot of money from this book. Right. He's got a 10 million advance, and he's made a million on advance sales mm -hmm. and so on. Some might say this book would not sell nearly so well were it not for the steamy sex scandal aspect to it. Does that um, bother you? I think it's probably important that... I um, explain, maybe in case he watches this, so that he understands that <laughs> my life is really different now than it was before uh, this, my name became a public name. And I, the smallest things I have to think about, whether it means when I'm looking for a new apartment to live in, I can't live across from someone because they can't be looking in. It means having more security in a building. It means so many different things. When something big is coming up, making sure I'm always looking nice when I leave the building, being even more concerned when I've put on a few pounds, that it's not just my own my own pain and my own beating myself up, which I do about it, but it's the anticipation of the horrible photograph and what everybody else is going to say about it. I mean, it, it is, there's so many things that come with that. And 
I hope one day that because of it, I'm able to do something good. And that first thing to me would be being able to have a parent-child privilege passed in the U.S. Um, I, I don't think this is the issue an issue in Britain or in most other places in the world, but in the U.S., it's still the case that parents and children can be forced to testify against each other. As your mother was against yes. you. Yes, and I, I actually, I should say, I was very grateful that he mentioned that in the book and he has mentioned that in his interviews and continued to bring that to people's attention because people pay attention to him. This, this is not about me and my 15 minutes of fame because if we all get them, I sure wanted mine to be about something different. He says in the book, I will always regret the personal mistake I made. Do you? Of course, yes. Do you wish it had never happened? I think given, given everything that's happened, yes, yes. If he phoned you up tomorrow mm -hmm. and crooked his finger at you, <laughs> yeah, right. and no one could find out, right. okay, this is in a dreamland, but no one would find out, No. you wouldn't nope. go there? Nope. You swear? Yeah, I swear. I swear. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. It's <laughs> okay. everywhere. Didn't you have to feel a little bad when you saw all those pictures when he was a little boy? No? Didn't you feel a little bad? No? I'm not that same thing. I'm listening, right? Mm. A little bit more. Of it. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, you guys can just, these, these are so these wide are so and generic wide. that you guys so, can yeah, just I'm be talking bantering. I'm one of the quotes that I'm going to be um, doing, and uh, it was spring again. What a shit. And it was spring. Well, also, too, because you know that he's like seven. No, it couldn't have been 2001. So. 2000. It's just pretty early. Yeah. Done his year of counselling and right, you know, life was good. Mm -hmm. Spring was on its way, and Henry was laughing. Mm -hmm. So, right. God, though, can you imagine living in a house when Henry is not laughing? Mm -hmm. I mean, my God. Yeah. How's it going? She's. Yeah. I wouldn't like to be on one side. So, again. Um, Crap's on my hand there. Yeah, I'd have to do the rap on the rubber before. I think I'll be getting the rest of the time. Doing. Camera out.